Welcome to the Building Science Education Series for the U.S. Department of Energy Solar Decathlon. I'm Paul Torsellini, and in this episode, we'll be talking about building codes and standards. We will also touch on some voluntary programs to encourage sustainability and low carbon designs. Before we get into this discussion, let's go over some important terms and definitions that we will be using throughout this episode. First, what is a standard? A standard is a set of rules. It can be very detailed, showing exactly how to do something. For example, an energy standard may specify a maximum U factor for a wall assembly and may also instruct the user in how to make that calculation. A further step would be to provide exacting solutions in how much insulation that represents in the wall, realizing the thermal bridging impact of the studs. Standards are often created by groups of experts under the auspices of a standards writing organization. ASHRAE, ASME, and NFPA are examples of these organizations. The process of creating a standard is complex, and there is a very formal process of writing, public review, and responding to the public review comments. Now, what is a code? A code is a set of rules that can include one or more standards. It is written such that it is enforceable as a law by a national, state, regional, or local entity. This entity is called an authority having jurisdiction, or AHJ. Once a code is adopted by the AHJ, it becomes the law of the land, and everyone, including engineers, architects, and contractors, are legally obligated to comply with it. Often the rules start as standards, and those standards are adopted as part of the building code. This is the case for ASHRAE 90.1, which is the energy efficiency standard for commercial buildings. ASHRAE 90.1 is updated every few years to include new technology and ideas. It is up to the authority having jurisdiction to adopt a specific version of the standard into the building code. Finally, let's talk about voluntary programs. These are collections of ideas and rules that often sound very code-like, but are voluntary and serve to push the envelope of efficiency and green building practices. Participating in a voluntary program shows leadership and commitment to environmental stewardship, and it also demonstrates how much is possible when it comes to highly energy efficient or zero energy buildings. Often successful participation in such voluntary programs comes with some sort of certification or recognition. I'm sure you've all seen a plaque in the doorway of a LEED certified building. We'll talk more about some examples of voluntary programs later in this episode. Let's go over some of the most well-known building codes and standards that have been adopted by local or state governments in the United States. Perhaps the most well-known set of building standards were developed by ASHRAE. There are quite a large number of ASHRAE standards but here are some of the ones most commonly re referenced related to energy and environmental performance. Standard 55 covers thermal environmental conditions, while 62.1 and 62.2 are related to ventilation and indoor air quality. ASHRAE Standard 90.1 has been the landmark for commercial building energy codes in the United States and a key basis for codes and standards around the world for the past 35 years. Standard 189.1 is the first comprehensive green building standard written in mandatory code language. The technical content of Standard 189.1 is now embedded into the International Green Construction Code under a joint initiative called IGCC, powered by 189.1. In 2023, ASHRAE published Standard 228, entitled Standard Method of evaluating zero net energy and zero net carbon building performance. In this standard is a process to determine if your building is zero, either with respect to energy or carbon emissions. Each of these are revised periodically and the release date is often written after the standard number as shown on this slide. Another code is called the International Energy Conservation Code, or IECC. 
The IECC is one of a larger family of codes covering a variety of topics developed by the International Code Council called the I-Codes. The focus of the IECC is to address energy conservation practices in the built environment. The IECC is most commonly adopted by governing bodies in the U.S. and is the code that DOE evaluates for use in low-rise residential buildings. The IECC commercial provisions contains not only a complete set of requirements for commercial and high-rise multifamily residential buildings, but also point to the latest version of the ASHRAE 90.1 standard. On this slide, we show a map of commercial energy codes in the United States. Many of these states have not directly adopted ASHRAE 90.1, but may make modifications. The message here is that while we have listed a version of ASHRAE 90.1, this is an approximation to the closest version that the state has adopted in terms of energy stringency. The states shown in white have no statewide building code. However, local governments can adopt and enforce their own set of codes. We see a similar story on the residential side. A few states have adopted code equivalent to the latest version of IECC. However, most states are still building to 2009 standards, which were written more than a decade ago. So much innovation has occurred in the building space over the past couple decades, but it takes years for new technologies and efficiency levels to be included in written standards, and then years or decades for states to adopt them. Surely we can do better than this. After seeing these maps, it becomes clear how much room there is for improvement when it comes to building efficient buildings. As I've said before, a building built to code is the worst building you can legally build. Codes represent the bottom, and to get to zero energy, we have to do better than this. Many zero energy buildings often exceed code by 50%. While this episode is about energy codes, the message is clear. To be successful at minimizing the environmental impact of buildings, you need to exceed the energy codes. You might use them as a starting point for design, but then work to exceed. Think back to the huge amount of energy consumed by buildings every year. Now, imagine how much we could cut that amount down through deep energy retrofits of existing buildings and designing all of our new buildings to be zero energy. California has adopted their own set of rules called Title 24. This code is very stringent in terms of energy efficiency, but again, a building built to just meet Title 24 is the worst building you can legally build in California. Often to get to zero, you will need more energy efficiency strategies. Let's look beyond the United States and at building code adoption around the world. We can see that building codes exist in most of North America, Europe, and Oceania. In Asia, South America, and Africa, some countries have mandatory or voluntary building codes, where others have none at all. Finally, let's talk about some voluntary programs that have to do with building efficiency. A common theme of all these programs is that they have a set of criteria. If you meet the criteria, you get points towards a total score. If your score exceeds certain thresholds, you can be recognized under that program. All these programs provide a great list of ideas on how to make your building more sustainable. Many ideas focus on how to create a more efficient building. In particular, the Living Building Challenge and the LEED program recognize buildings for achieving zero. While not a certification or recognition program, ASHRAE has a series of advanced energy design guides which are filled with ideas or how-to tips on achieving zero energy for commercial and larger buildings. Three guides are currently available in the zero energy series, office buildings, school buildings, and multifamily. Many of the strategies discussed also apply to smaller residential buildings. That's all for this episode. Please feel free to browse the resources to learn more about energy codes and how they are used. And thanks for watching.